So my garage is an absolute pit right now um, because it is, uh, I'm in Michigan and it's 11 degrees out and I had thrown everything everywhere trying to get this car for ready for a couple of events last year that it never made it to. So uh, this is pretty much the view that you're gonna get of it. But today uh, I'm going to pull the rear subframe out. Uh, I redid the subframe, actually it was in this car um, and it has a full V1 wise fab kit on it, uh, or in it, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, and this car has fuel coilovers, but, uh, yeah, there are some things that I did when I redid the subframe that I don't really like, and I'm going to show you them and, uh, some lessons I learned for sure <laughs> about, um, how to do things and how not to do things. So hopefully it's informative, hopefully you enjoy it. Uh, and uh, let's get after it. All right, so sorry about the background noise, but uh, I have some electric heaters going here to try and keep it like bearable. So I'm gonna jack this thing up and uh, drop this thing out of here. with the uh, added bracing that I've done uh, the car doesn't flex a lot so that wheel stays off the ground when uh, you just have a jack stand over here that's kind of cool are already kind of numb as you can see if you can see earlier on the jack it was actually just like snow just like chilling on here <laughs> so yeah it's pretty cold in here i don't have a thermometer but i guess it's about 20 something So, uh, yeah, you can see it's got the wise fat V1 on it, field coilovers, the dream combo right there. I got to take the brake calipers off because, uh, they'll stay with the car. And then these are actually brand new rotors, but, uh, this is what happens when you're in a Michigan garage that has moisture issues. They just, uh, flash rust. And so, yeah, it kind of sucks. Uh, same thing is happening to some of these rod ends on the wise fab. Luckily, it's very surfacey. I just need to spray them all down with oil again. Yeah, I'll get this thing out of here. Originally I had this car obviously and then I got this car and uh, we just transferred the subframes because I knew I wanted to drive this car at events and obviously I had the wise fab but I didn't have any other adjustable control arms or anything and so it was just kind of a stopgap solution until uh, I could redo another subframe and then so it should be 
free and clear. Finally, I'm dropping this guy out. Another thing to do around here is put an anti seize on everything. Except brake caliper slides. Don't do that. Baby pry bar might hit it. Let's see. Yep. That'll do. Oh yeah, she's that good. Thought of them. Perfect. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so that, that actually worked pretty fantastically. Somehow I managed to like catch it, balance it on that board. I'm just that good. <laughs> but, uh, probably the form. Okay. We're on the ground. Uh, drop a little bit and then, uh, yank her out of here. about it but grab you the first thing you will notice is that uh this paint is like flaking off here right okay so i actually brought this inside and pulled the wise fab off it so i can show you better what i did well and what i did poorly this is the subframe out of the orange car that's in my garage i decided that i was going to get the wise fab kit for it because I got the WiseFab rear, the Driftworks V3 front knuckles, and the field suspension coilovers all from uh, the guys over at Field Suspension. I talked to Odie and those guys over there are good people. So highly recommend those guys if you're looking for that, that stuff. But I yanked this thing out and I immediately sent it off to, to get stripped in the tank, right? Like they dip it, the strips inside, outside, the whole ball of wax. Uh, came back to me brand new looking brand new like bare metal and i was super hyped to get started on it so uh gk tech had just come out with their v2 reinforcement kit which you can see uh you know the lower control arm things the, the traction arm mounts the toe arm mounts and even the little uh the upper control arm mounts there um and then the rear plate as well uh and if you plan on running your S chassis at the track, you should do this for sure. Um, one, these are known to tear off, uh, well, especially these ones, uh, because they're just not very well attached in general. Uh, and this, this traction arm mount is very flexy. Like you can, you can almost move it around with your hand when it doesn't have this brace in it. So highly recommend doing this stuff. There are people that tell you that your car doesn't need it. It does do it if you don't want your shit to break. Um, and just your suspension to work properly. Subframe so, had these stance subframe risers in it uh, before I uh, pulled it out the second time. Uh, so I had to cut these out of here. Uh, you also notice the weights that are on an S13 subframe are gone. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, cut the mounts out. There's a lot of galvanic action in there, a bunch of white cruddy corrosion and uh got it back welded all these things in it uh you know welded the gk tick kit up welded the rear plate up um <clears throat> but didn't put the bushings back in yet uh because i had cut them my plan was to just epoxy them in as you can see did not work uh with a nice large crack there and a nice large crack 
there. And one of the front ones is cracked as well. Filled the insides with urethane foam because I didn't know how else to seal the inside of the subframe. And then I pour 15 the whole exterior because I couldn't bake it in a powder coating oven after I filled it with urethane foam. I mean, it worked. Uh, most of the pour 15 is holding up really well. Uh, but here's where the issue came in. I did not fit the lower control arms or any of the control arms to the pickup points while I was, you know, before or while I was welding these in. So I had to hammer the crap out of all of these. Um, and as you can see, the 415 even fails when you, wow, that's pretty bad. Uh, oh yeah, I also welded it after. I even scuffed it up. You can even actually see the scuff marks. Let's see if we can get a focus in here. Come on. There we go. You can see where I tried to scuff it after I uh, welded it up. I welded it after I had it stripped. Um, so then I made a bunch of corrosion after, you know, getting it all super nice. These ones are like way too wide. They're like way pinched down when I installed the mounts. Obviously the poor 15 is failing. Here. And you know, same with this side. And you can see for some reason there's like little spots where the poor 15 just did not want to adhere properly. And that's peeling off and exposing bare metal, which is like instantly rusting in my really, uh, moisture laden garage also you can see there's there's already more galvanic action on these uh, aluminum subframe bushings uh there's some more of that foam you can see the foam coming out here not exactly a great way to do things um oh you can also see that the poor 15 moved out of the way of the nuts here uh so i don't know if it just wasn't i let it cure for like two days so I don't know if it just wasn't cured or if for some reason it wasn't strong right there. Uh, this is that GK Tech plate as well, though. Not the proper order to do things in. Uh, I also, here's another tip here. Eccentric bolts, don't need them. Toss them. Uh, they're dumb to run with adjustable control arms. Uh, for a while, I was convinced that uh, I should run them because you can adjust the camber and toe curves a little bit and you know find like the super perfectly ideal uh setup but again unless you're running fd uh where you can't even reinforce your subframe anyway uh it's kind of pointless it's you know it just over complicates things those things can loosen up and move on you so i'll be getting all new hardware uh i had all this hardware re-zinc plated as you can see here uh it's not very durable uh, it's pretty frustrating actually, uh, it just tends to come off and basically flash rust in my garage. So, uh, you can see all my hardware here. I, I had the entire bucket of hardware re-zinc plated and it's all like kind of meh. So I will be taking my other subframe, my spare subframe, doing everything in the proper order. So I will be installing the WiseFab arms making sure everything is enough clearance, redoing the lower control arm mounts. Actually, I'll detail that all in the next, in the next subframe video. For, for now, you just, I just wanted you to see <laughs> the mistakes I made uh, on the subframe. And even as someone who has been a mechanic for a long time, has been into S chassis for like 15 years, you can still make mistakes on how you do things. And like I said, I will be totally doing a, a rebuild on my spare subframe, uh, what I would consider the right way now. <laughs> so I think, uh, I think that will be much more informative um, and should produce a much better end result uh, when it all comes back together. So be looking out for that. Um, again, towards the end of this week, I'm going to get that video out about uh, the two S13s 
and uh, I hope that was informative. I hope that saves you from, you know, maybe doing something kind of not the right way uh, or modifying your subframe in like a weird direction. Um, but yeah, have a great one.